and the regime, the five point one. And unfortunately, we are not able to get like the source file because it was like a NTSC in Japan. And because of the production, we had to do some edit, and we did it like uh, in France with some PAL, so it was like 55 per second. So we had, we had to use like this uh, master instead of like the functional from uh, Japan. Is there a four-tier release coming to Japan? Do I have to import it? Yes. Uh, I can't really tell anything about that right now. <laughs> Uh, this is a true or, false, true or false question. Eventually, I'll get English. Uh, do you think Christopher Nolan saw Interstellar 555, the story of the secret star system, and said, that's a good title. I'm going to drop everything but the first word. I'm going to add an R, and then that's Interstellar. You said he told it. Yes. <laughs> We're coming at you, Christopher. We're going to send you the blue man. <laughs> I think you will uh, put like a T because R is not like 5 plus 5 plus 5 in the letters alphabet. Uh, what do you guys actually think would surprise fans to learn about working with Daft Punk? <laughs> uh, working with Daft Punk is uh, life changing. I'm talking for myself. Uh, uh, working uh, so many years, but. Uh, it's, yeah, it's life changing, and uh, and I think they are, you know, like uh, they are like a, a big inspiration. Even though you didn't meet them or work closely to, to 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 them, they are definitely part of of your life. You know, I can I can see and I can hear a lot of fans around here. And that's what is a thing that that changed our lives, uh, open our minds, open our hearts. Open our ears, of course, and uh, and their music will continue, you know, to, to follow our lives, you know, like uh, for the early fans. Now, some of you, some of us, are parents, and uh, we want, you know, to keep, you know, the transmission, keep the dream alive. And this is what is happening here today, you know, sharing. Uh, it's the same for me, except like I never felt really like working, but more like playing around and having fun all the time. But I have to say something also talking about Cedric. Uh, Cedric has a special relationship with the, uh, Thomas Angiman, being a friend, like a close friend first, and now working and, 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 and running the Daft Punk company. And he's definitely the third Daft Punk, you know, when we, you know, uh, Thinking about it as a creative uh, group, Cedric is definitely the third member of the band. So, uh, this has nothing to do with Interstellar, but I am a fucking huge fan of the Tron Legacy soundtrack. And, and I'm just curious for the two of you, uh, like, what are your thoughts on that album? Uh, just if you could talk a little bit about um, that, I just wanted to bring it up because I fucking love it. <laughs> yeah, me too. I fucking love it. And the good thing, uh, I, I was on the other side, you know, because at that time I wasn't working with Daft Punk anymore. So uh, I was outside of the of the of the Daft Punk bubble, and I was touched, you know, like uh, and when I, you know, witnessed the, the the work and the commitment of the band, you know. Uh, trying to go further, you know, not doing uh, what everybody was expecting. And me first, as a fan, I was expecting like a full electro album. Oh, I'm looking about now because I, I can see some other people up there. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, uh, I was, you know, and writing such, you know, uh, amazing piece of music, uh, uh, recording a, like a Philharmonic Orchestra. It was uh, an amazing job. And, and it fits just perfectly. It, it, it was meant to be. Uh, for me, it was like I moved here when they were recording the in LA. I mean, when they were recording the soundtrack, so it changed kind of my life because I 
Donc dire un nice day, dire after. Un autre soirée de de joy and the pleasure to go to her studio and they did like the whole like uh, philharmonic thing. And also we went to the party with Jeff, Jeff Bridges in Vancouver. Yeah. <laughs> that, that's the highlight. <laughs> uh, of course I'm asking this. Uh, no, I'm sorry, Steve. You should tell the story about Thomas and Kiman looking like spermatozoid during five days. <laughs> this is what they want to hear. <laughs> It was not about the music, it was when the, they did the cameo in the movie, we stayed in Vancouver in the RV for like five days, every day like the production they were coming saying like get ready, get ready now, but uh, after five days, like on Friday night at uh, 2 a.m. they did the, the, the cameo and they were wearing like this kind of like white uh, hoodie and uh, all over thing, like it looks like the Woody Allen movie when the <laughs> thing you were seeing about the, you know. The, the end of the line club? Did you receive you want to know about sex without uh, asking? <laughs> you know that Woody Allen movie? <laughs> so look, type it and you will look at the outfit. You look like spermatozoid. <laughs> Uh, I am curious if the two of you have a lot of, or are there a lot of unreleased songs by the guys, or is it like a Prince Vault situation where there's just a ton of demos and whatever, or is it pretty much like the stuff that's out there, that's the stuff that they made? There is a ton of archival materials. That's what we did for the last, last album, you know, we released a little bit of like our text and stuff. But uh, so many archival stuff, it's hard to really tell. We never had time to really like, dig into the archival do, do you think down the road that you might, or is it who knows? Who knows? <laughs> so, moving on to why we're here. So I want to jump back in time. Uh, the guys have finished homework. I'm going to read a little of this. The guys have finished homework and decide to work on a new album. They decide it's going to be a concept album. They're going to be adopting robot personas, and they're going to make a feature film to visualize the album. What was your reaction when you heard some of these things, and who came up with what? Was it the guys? Was it a collaboration? Can you sort of take us behind the scenes of, of that period of time? Yes, yeah, so the early 2000s, uh, we, we, we finished the homework sequence, which was uh, an amazing uh, uh, campaign uh, at the time, because um, homework put Daft Punk in the in the in the front page uh, uh, in record magazine in the, uh, worldwide. Uh, they came up with like um, an amazing also video campaign. Uh, remember the around the world video, the Spy Jones, uh, the first, uh, Roman Coppola Revolution '99 in Saint Germain, Berlin. The videos were very uh, ambitious at the time and um, it cost a lot of money, it was a lot of investment for, I'm not going to go too deep into the music business thing, but uh, Daft Punk are uh, their own producers, you know, they, so they invest, they are, the, all the money they, they get, they invest it to create uh, more stuff, more videos, more music. And the first album was already a big thing, you know, direct uh, uh, releasing and producing all those videos. And I remember we were, um, uh, we had a small office in the north uh, side of Paris, in Montmartre, and uh, Thomas, Guiman, and Cedric uh, were coming. So the studio of Daft Punk was like five minutes away, and, and Cedric and I, we were at Daft Tracks, our office, and the, and the band used to do a lot of uh, back and forth. And when they came up with this uh, uh, brilliant and maximal idea of uh, doing a, a, a 14 or 13 tracks, on the album, I don't know, uh, so maybe I forgot the number of 12 tracks, maybe 14 chapters, uh, doing 14 videos. Uh, I was sweating on the office side of things, <laughs> trying to convince the record label, Virgin at the time, uh, to follow the, their dream. But the, the power of Daft Punk, they managed to get all the team behind them, and, uh, and, 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 and we did it. So. Uh, 
I can't really remember how everything happened, but uh, what I remember it's like first we wanted to do like a live action film. We were uh, working on some direction, and I think the first idea was something like Metropolis or Brazil with like some people being exploited, uh, doing their working like kind of like the modern times and stuff. But it was not really like going with the music. We were like writing the the story as they were working on the music, so it was like kind of a parallel thing. So that's where I think after where we came with the idea of this uh, band, uh, and at the beginning I think it was coming from like uh, like the rock bands. They have some attitude. They were wearing like sunglasses and stuff, and we were like, oh, why they are like this? <laughs> and we imagined the whole thing behind this with like the manager. It's not like really like manager, more like the impresario, like the. Pinocchio, you know, like I remember, like Pinocchio, the master of puppets. <laughs> <laughs> and so, working on the them on the music and together on the, on the story, we came with this thing. And because also the life in the music is so visual, it was easy to put like story on the music, you know. Like. Uh, man, I have so many questions. Do you? You guys, and I'm going to butcher his name, so uh, I grew up loving space, uh, you know, um